guy is new to LA, brand new to LA. So serious love. Let's keep it going with Dan Green. <laughs> Good night, folks. How's it going? Yeah, my, accent, my accent's a little bit different. Um, I'm from Australia. I come from a very, very small town in Australia, and I spent 16 years in Texas, so it's my accent's just completely fucked up. I'm sorry. <laughs> people in Australia, people in Australia ask me why I talk so fucking slow, and people in America ask me why I talk so fast. I can't get, I can't get a win either way. <laughs> I made the mistake of talking to my dad on the way here, so it's kind of fucked up my set a little bit because. <laughs> I grew up in a town with 31 people. One street, called it Middle Street, makes no fucking sense. That's what it's called. Okay. One street on Middle Street, which means I, we had one record player in the house when I grew up. So I listened to the music my dad listened to. So he grew up on, thankfully he loved Motown, so it was Commodores, yeah. Lionel Richie, that kind of good shit. But he talked to me today. And he said he doesn't get too much media where he lives out in the bush. So, uh, he told me he had a brand new artist that he'd be bought, went and bought four CDs from. And I went, oh yeah. I said, what's his name? He's got a great voice. What's his name? R. Kelly. <laughs> so my dad is the newest R. Kelly fan. <laughs> and I told him, I said, why don't you just go and Google R. Kelly? And he goes, what should I put as a subject line? I said, don't worry, you can put fucking hiking in Cambodia and it's going to come up as that video is the first thing that's going to come up, Dad. So my dad's not talking to me anymore now. Um, I'm a big guy. I have big bloke problems. I don't know if there's any of you in here, but uh, you can sympathize with me. I'm between belt holes. <laughs> Yeah, the one, yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I have a standing belt hole and I have a sitting belt hole. <laughs> I've, been out there, I've been out there sitting for the last 20 minutes in agony because this stand has been, not, been stuck on the whole time. It's not good in front of you people. Okay? But if you ever see one of your fat buddies at a restaurant sit down and then undo his belt. <laughs> He's not being risque, he just needs to sit down correctly. That's how it works with his Alright? So, uh, we don't really have road rage in Texas. I spent 15 years in Houston. Um, you can carry a gun in your car in Houston. It's considered an extension of your house, California. So there you go. So we don't have too many people tooting. You get one toot. Two toots. <laughs> <laughs> so I got into road rage on Santa Monica Boulevard yesterday, okay? Santa Monica Boulevard yesterday. I cut a guy, he cut me off, potato, potato, who doesn't care who cut off who? In the end, this guy stopped to lane of traffic on Santa Monica Boulevard for two and a half minutes to get me in a staring contest. A staring contest, goddammit. I wound down the window. Mate, I've got two lazy eyes. One of them looks that way. The other one looks that way. I said, you got a better off chance of beating a Muppet in a staring contest than beating me. I'm all over the place. You're not going to win. Uh, who here has been skydiving before? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. I got offered to go skydiving again the other day. I turned it down. I still got PTSD from the last time. It was 20 years ago. I was in the army. And I just finished playing bad guy for the SAS and they said, what we're going to give you is a yippee jump as a reward. A yippee jump. That's what they call this shit. And I said, a yippee jump? Yeah, we're going to take you out for a tandem jump. It'd be great. I said, do I get a uniform? And they said, nah, nah, wear what you're wearing. Short rugby shorts and a tank top. That's my skydiving uniform. I'm a little bit concerned because the guy who packs the chute, his name's Dave. Dave got shot in the nuts with a beanbag round two days prior. <laughs> So he's out of commission. Now the guy packing the shoots is a guy named Toby. And Toby just got out of packing shoot school, whatever the fuck they call it, a week ago. So now he's packing my fucking parachute. Then they introduce me to a sergeant major named Bruce. And Bruce comes up to me and goes, son, how much do you fucking weigh? I say, I weigh about 240 pounds, sergeant. And he sits there and goes, great. He says, me and you, we're gonna fucking plummet. <laughs> I'm shaking now just as a result of this thing. Okay? So now I get strapped to Bruce and we end up going up to 15,000 feet and I'm shooting bricks. Bruce is like, this is going to be awesome. But just as we're about to jump out, 
I'm about to explain something to Bruce. I know something he doesn't. I'm free balling those rugby shorts. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to make a decision when I got my harness on where I was going to put everything. And I went with the meat and two vegetable approach. Put <laughs> <laughs> the harness down the middle. <laughs> So I'm thinking I'm safe. We jump out of the plane and my nuts are sucked to the side of my thigh. So for the next 45 seconds, my nuts are getting sandblasted at terminal velocity. I'm dying. I'm looking. I'm sitting there going, my nuts, my nuts, my nuts. And all I can hear from Bruce is, get out of your right. This is fucking crazy. It's nuts. He's attached to my back. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Pop the shoot, pop the shoot. We pop the shoot. I'm like, thank God I can finally reach down and grab him. I said, this won't be a problem. I can grab him and find out what's going on. I reach down. <laughs> it's too fucking far. I can't grab my balls. They're stuck out there. So now I think, how bad can this be? We're just going to glide nice and slowly down to the football field below. Where 600 primary school kids have gathered to watch this fucking land. And all I can see are my battered red nuts hanging out the side look like Rudolph the fucking reindeer. <laughs> the kookaburra is the most majestic bird in the outback. I don't have fucking segways. I haven't learned that much of comedy yet. <laughs> can you say that line for me, ma'am? The kookaburra is the most majestic bird in the outback. The kookaburra is the most majestic bird in the outback. Yeah! You're giving me the kookaburra is the most majestic bird in the outback, man. Okay, see now this is where I get frustrated, right? <laughs> Apparently, my the kookaburra is the most majestic bird in the outback was too fucking Australian for the Australian IMAX movie. I came out here to try out to be the narrator for that movie and was told that my accent was too fucking Australian. I came out here to steal a perfectly good. American job from one of your people? <laughs> An American stole that job from me! <laughs> let me teach you, let me help you out right now. I'm going to give you all American Australian accent just before I leave, okay? Well, you all walk out here with an Australian accent. Just repeat these three words after me in your accent, not trying to sound like me. Good, I, and might, as in Vargas might let me get up here and do this again one day. Put them all together. Good, <laughs> mate. Oh, Jesus Christ. It makes me feel like I'm in a bar in Sydney. That was fucking fantastic. My name's Dan Green. Thank you very much.